one day on a home that they can live and have a comfortable place they can call home. The government came up with the Big Four agenda and affordable housing was one of them. And as we try to find ways to achieve this, technology and new innovations have done so well in providing solutions to the said plan. Here is the feature on the EPS materials. Affordable housing in Kenya is on the heights to implement the Big Four agenda as enshrined in Jubilee Party's work plan. Affordable housing, one of the key agendas, has been on the receiving. is on the heights to implement the Big Four agenda as enshrined in Jubilee Party's work plan. Affordable housing, one of the key agendas, has been on the receiving end as many Kenyans claim not to understand how it will benefit them. Working with the private sector, we will deliver half a million decent and affordable homes to working Kenyans in the next five years. We will make owning a home an opportunity every Kenyan of modest income can afford. Home ownership is a path to the middle class. It will become, it will now become an accessible part of the Kenyan dream. Importantly, the delivery of the new homes will also create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. The move awakens the private sectors in the housing industry to try as much as possible to incorporate technology towards achieving decent housing in Kenya. Tunataka kuhakikisha kwamba hii kazi ya ujenzi wa manyumba manyumba ambayo mwananchi anaweza pia kuishi na ku eh kwa kwa bei nafuu na nyinyi sasa ndio trial kwa sababu hii kiisha vizuri Ndiyo tunataka iwe example ya zile tutajenga katika sehemu zingine za Nairobi, Mombasa. Eh? Na tukiweza kuanzisha na mna imu najua pia hii ni kazi. Wa Kenya wapate kazi. Kwa sababu watu wale watakuwa wakijenga, hiyo ni kazi. Tumesema ya kwamba mambo kama milango, mambo kama locks na mambo mengine kama haya, itengezue hapa. Sini namna hiyo? Wananchi wetu pia wapate kazi hiyo. Sini namna hiyo? I take a visit to a factory site in Sokimau where I meet Humphrey Ogutu, the head of the factory at Koto Housing, who is championing the use of EPS. Uh, Koto Housing was, uh, came into being in Kenya five years ago. The whole concept was that uh, there's an easier way of building as opposed to the traditional way of building. The whole concept was to get modular housing that you can build fast and in large volumes. So the local partners who are in Kenya went and partnered with the parent company in Malaysia, where is the home of Koto. And Koto is not a Kenyan name. It comes from Malaysia, and we work as a franchise of Koto Malaysia. Malaysia is a key company. They came up with the formulation, they came up with the products, and they came up with all the necessary components required. So when once the idea had been formed, they went ahead and went to Malaysia and spoke to the person who had the franchise for this product. Once they had conceptualized the idea and they made the order for the machines, I joined them about uh, four or five months later to come and do the implementation of their dream. This new technology comes with a bunch of advantages as Ogutu says it is suits well with all regions, even those vastly affected with floods. If you look at EPS as being the, the building, then there's a misconception. EPS is just a formwork to hold the concrete. Any EPS building, any panel building is actually a concrete structure based on what? The strength is derived from the concrete which has been tested for many years. It is something which is well known, the properties are known, everything about concrete, people know. So we are not changing that. 
The only way is the way we are presenting the concrete and the way we are casting the concrete. So what we make is permanent formwork. On the permanent formwork, you are able to pour the concrete and hold the columns and beams. Our structures are column and beam structures, where you have a ring beam at the bottom with the columns coming to the top ring beam. On top of the ring beam, you may have another floor, which is a slab, or you may put a conventional roof. So the strength of the panel has nothing to do with the strength of the building. The strength of the building is determined by the concrete that you pour and the reinforcement. It is re Expanded polystyrene EPS is a lightweight cellular plastic material consisting of small holospherical balls. It is this closed cellular construction that gives EPS its remarkable characteristics. EPS is produced in a wide range of densities, providing a varying range of physical properties. In fact, this one is better than uh, stone because stone has a tendency to suck the water from the ground. The EPS does not suck water from the ground. The only thing that might be sucking water is a plaster which is attached to the EPS. But by and large, if you use a raft foundation on that, the area of contact, the EPS vis-a-vis a -vis standard slab, the area of contact is much reduced. You'll only have the beams which will be able to draw the water from the ground source. And therefore, your house will be much drier. We're not saying it's going to be 100% dry, but you need to make special considerations, especially if it is a swampy place, so that you can mitigate the dampness that is coming from the ground. Amfri takes me through the process involved to get this precious commodity. I'd like to begin with the process of uh, making beads and uh, the EPS. Behind me is the first machine in our process. This is what we call the pre-expander. On this machine, we convert the raw material which comes in this size, which is like a fine salt. That's the raw material. We come from this material. It's really small. Yeah, very small. And actually it's called a salt because of the size and the green, the texture. It is very tiny. And what normally happens is this machine is that you introduce heat and this is blown 40 times to the size of this other material here. This one here. This is now the expanded beads. Okay? It's bigger. Between the first one and this one, the expansion ratio is 40 times. So what it means is that the bag that you see behind you there is expanded into 40 times. It fills two silos. Yes. On this machine, we have steam coming in through these pipes here. This one's and that one. Those ones bring the steam into the barrel. That's the expansion barrel at the back. It is weighed at the top, 17 kilos per cycle and then it comes into the expanding chamber. From there, the steam mixes with the beads, the small sized beads. After mixing with the beads, it will expand. That expansion is about 40 times. And after it's expanded, then it's taken out in cycles, in batches, with a batch taking how long? Maybe about two or three minutes for each cycle. After the batch has gone through the machine, it is now taken to the silo. The silo is porous, it's made of a porous net. Reason being that the excess blowing agent, which is pentane, which is embedded in the raw material, is allowed to escape. Okay. If we were to use it direct, then it would mean that whatever we make will still be expanded, so it will end up being distorted. So th that's why the cycle time is that you expand today, you give it 24 hours. After 24 hours is when you take it to the next process. And during the 24 hours, the excess pentane escapes okay. naturally. Right. That is why the silos are left open and whatever is uh, escaping, escapes naturally. Our power house, which has got our boiler, it has a compressor, it has the cooling water, which are the three components which are used in the next machines. 
the boiler that we have, apart from the boiler, we have what we call the accumulator. It's like a drum for the steam. Right. So once you come from the boiler, you take it into the accumulator. It's a reservoir for steam, so that when you're using the steam, the fluctuation is reduced. Okay. It's reduced by virtue of having that storage. So it allows the boiler to run for long periods, and then it stores the steam. Mm -hmm. When the steam has reached enough, right. then you can now start using the machine. It's a boiler, which is a four-ton boiler, with a diesel burner. Okay. This is a diesel burner, which is powering the boiler. You feed in your diesel from the tanks, through the pipes that you can see on this end. That is your infeed to the burner, okay? And then the water is coming from the back of the boiler. It comes into the boiler, it is heated, then it leaves through those two pipes. The pipe that you're seeing at the, at the top, that one at the top, goes straight to the receiver, and from there now you can distribute. That is the boiler. That takes care of the steam side of things. On the other side, We have the compressors. The blue ones? The blue ones. These are two co compressors, 37 kilowatts each. We've divided them into two for the simple reason that we can face. If we're running all machines, we run both. Okay. If we're running part of the plant, we can run one compressor. And same as the steam, the compressor has an accumulator at the top, which stores the air. It's a reservoir for air. So whenever you've switched on the compressor, the compressor fills the reservoir, and then you take your air from the reservoir into the machines, the machines which are now producing the panels. Yes, and see the two blue pipes at the top? Those ones, those ones are for cooling water. Because once we have cast the panel, you need to cool the mold right. so that you can remove whatever you formed inside the mold, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay. Once you have your compressed air, you have your steam, mm -hmm. and you have your cooling water. Right. All three elements come into this machine. Okay. We have now the beads from the pre-expander. Mm -hmm. Now we're going on to the block molding machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. This is a block molder. This produces the individual units okay. of the panel. So each panel is produced in the mold. Okay. And you see this one's here. This one will generate the hole oh. inside the mold. Okay? okay? Yeah. So this one, once you're running the machine, it will close and this will be filled with the beads. Mm -hmm. You'll introduce steam through those pipes at the bottom. Right. Okay? Those, that steam is going to make the beads fuse. Once they fuse, the heat fuses the beads, then you need to remove the product from the mold. Okay. So you'll open the machine and through this, these ejectors, the ejectors in here, right. which will push the product, the product out. out. It will fall to the ground. We normally put a canvas here okay. to give it a soft landing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. It will fall. Mm -hmm. Each cycle takes about uh, 130 seconds. And you get four pieces. Four because pieces in 130 seconds? This mold seconds? has got 130 seconds. Wow. Yes, that is what it is. And for each machine, there are different sizes of molds and different lengths. Okay. Yes. This is the product that you'd get. Mm -hmm. Okay. It comes out of the machine that way. Right. Okay. This plug is represent the cores that we've because, seen, yeah. and then this would fall that way to okay. the ground right. once the mold reaches the end. Mm -hmm. The one that you're seeing here is a 200 millimeter panel. Okay. From here to here is 200 millimeters. From that end to this end is 1.2 meters. That's a block now. That's a block. This is now the individual block, which we are going to compile yeah, two or three of them right. to make a panel. Okay. There are some panels we can actually coat this, especially over the lintel. Okay. We can put a single one right. between the lintel and the wall plate, mm. just to give you the space of 300. Mm. This module here is 300. That is 1.2. And this is 200. 200. Yes. We have uh, four varieties. Mm -hmm. There's one with the 150. Mm -hmm. There's one with the 1.8. Okay. 
So we have uh, 200 by 1.2, and we have 200, we have 150 by 1.2. That represents the two machines that you see machines here. That, okay. Yeah, these two are uh, 1.2 machines, the length, this one here. Okay. The cavity is filled with concrete, especially on external walls. For internal walls, you have an option. Okay. You can leave some of them open because there's no danger of, uh, there's no security risk per se. Right. What we're doing here, we're burning the sun. We're drawing the sun so that we remove all organic matter and we filter the sun to the size that we require. There's a particular size that we need for us to have a uniform coating, which is not going to be affected by any decay because our coatings are not mixed with water. We mix it with a polymer, let it be polymer, which would react with any organic material. That is why we have to dry. What you're seeing behind us is the sand. You put in sand from one end, it comes to the cheek, it is heated. By the time it gets here, the sand has been filtered and dried. And even for the ratios that we mix, we need to use dry sand, not the one in the water. And then from here, now we add the chemicals and the cement to make a plaster. That one which is going to go and coat the panels, the panels that we saw. We're going to coat them and put a reinforcement so that we have a fortified plaster. Now this is the next process in our process, which is a coating process. Here is where we coat the panels together to make one panel. After we joined them into several pieces, we bring them together and then we coat. In front of me is the reinforcement. It is a five inch net. We have different sizes for different inch, different panels. So what normally happens to pass it through this machine, it goes through the head and it is plastic. To give you the finish that you get when you get in the finish part. So once you've done that, you put it on the drying racks and then you give it uh, 36 hours or so and then you turn it around. Like this one we are doing is a second coating. What you see here is the coating process. That is the mixer, the continuous mixer, which has got the dry part and the wet part. The two of them meet in the tube and it is brought forward to the tube. Once it's brought to the tube, then the panels are standing from the panel. After the tube, the coating is ready. And then from there, we cut the net to make them the different panels because the whole of this coating. Once we've done that, then we take them off and put them in the uh, Normally we work with about 5 millimeters. 5 millimeters is the thickness that we use. 5 is the optimal. Because if it becomes too thin, then it will be having problems with the rotation. When you make it too big, then the cost of the panel goes up. So you have to balance it. Yes. Transportation is quite easy because this thing, one of this, this is like uh, 1.6 kilometers, is about 30 kilos. Okay. So the challenge is on the volume oh. as opposed to the weight. Yes. Okay. With stone, it's the other way around. Stone is small but very dense. So okay. this normally marks the end of the process. After curing, we now take it out. The government has taken precedence in using this technology and one of the notable projects is in Kajadu County where the EPS Matijus are used to build police housing project. Meet Mark Mwisha, the marketing director at Koto Housing. He proudly talks of his three-bedroom house built using the EPS material. Well, uh, since you know you finished with the factory, now here's where you come when you want to build a house. We're the ones who actually do sell you the technology. We explain to you about the technology. Um, what is the advantage of this? Um, uh, how long will it take you to build? You see, in construction, uh, it has always taken a longer period of building when you're building using the brick and mortar. 
Whereas in, with this house that you're looking at here, which we built with the cotton panels, you're looking at about four to five weeks from foundation to completion, mm -hmm. and you move into your house. And it's a very strong house because as you've seen the panels, within those cavities, or the, we call them the core holes, we reinforce with concrete, with steel, steel bars and concrete. Yeah. So you're creating a series of columns throughout your structure. So any building that has a series of columns throughout the, uh, within the walls is a very strong building. As I informed you earlier, this house actually took us uh, four weeks. Four weeks? Four weeks. So you look at about 30 days. Pushing at most, give it about six weeks, mm -hmm. right? Because it also depends on the type of finishes you want. You look like a person who likes high-end finishes, so of I might course. push an extra of week, course. you know? <laughs> so um, it took us about uh, four, uh, four weeks to finish this particular house. Now, why I would opt you to, to actually take into this technology? One, if you're gonna get a house within a period of four weeks, mm -hmm. and it's a permanent structure, right? When after being built, you cannot even tell the difference between the conventional and this one. It's a, it's a bonus for you. Two, you have to understand the materials are not very heavy. They are actually light. So which means I do have to consider doing a very, very hard foundation. You know, I do have to excavate all the way to down because basically mostly you find most money is lost when you're doing the foundation. Because if, if the rock is about three meters deep, if you're going to fill that with hardcore, that could be the cost of another house, right? So you'll do maybe what we call a floating foundation. Labor, you'll use minimal people. You don't use, actually we, we never had more than nine people and we still finished in, 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 in a breaking period of four weeks. So there are very many advantages. Like now, if you look at this house we're in right now, this is like a three bedroom, right? Wow. It's a three bedroom. And as you can feel, the temperature is cool. Now it means like this throughout because the EPS does not transfer cold from the outside into the house. So, and then you also find that uh, since you have this, the, the columns, in cases you're in place where there are tremors, mm -hmm. now this kind of uh, technology actually does prevent the house from actually collapsing, even in a place where there are earthquakes and stuff like that, which in Kenya we are lucky we don't have. So apart from the insulation qualities, this material does not absorb water, which means you can even try, you can even finish with a wallpaper and you won't see like the kawaida, you know, when you do with the brick and mortar, what will happen, water is absorbed from the outside, then it starts boil, uh, you know, like boiling over from the inside, which makes the wallpaper now come out because it's too much water in the, in the, in the building. So basically with this, you never have those kind of effects. Right. Absolutely. One thing, let me tell you what makes actually a house now be unstable. One, you're trying to build in a fast pace, trying to compete with the, this technology, which is in stone and water, which you can't. You have to give time for your walls to settle. So, and, and with the EPS, as I told you, it's light. So basically, even though I do my slab, the chances of my wall being very heavy is not there. It's actually very light. Mm -hmm. Then another thing you also have to look at with uh, the brick and mortar compared to this technology mm -hmm. uh, is the different ways which we can build. We have engineers come with different ways you can build. I could decide if I'm doing a story building, I do the conventional columns and beams, right? Mm -hmm. That's a superstructure. Then as you've seen my panels, you've seen how light there you can carry like one person. I use this as infills and I use the slabs, which means my, my building will be lighter. So the chances of my house collapsing, my friend, dude, not in this lifetime. <laughs> not in this lifetime. Now, with this technology, as it's been experimented, this technology can actually withstand winds of about 360 kilometers an hour. That's a hurricane. As it been tested? Where the technology began was in Malaysia. You know the change, the, the weather just changed just like that. It could be something like this, then all of a sudden there's a very huge storm with major winds. And if you look at this technology back in Malaysia, it started back in 1974, and the houses are still standing. My house here is seven years old now, actually six years old since we built it. And look at it, it's still standing. Standing. There's been rain, there's been water, so it has gone through all the elements, and it still stands strong. Basically with my technology, you only have one disadvantage. Just one? If you, okay. Just one, I'll be honest. All right. You know, basically, if you have something good, you have something good. Okay. So I have to tell you for sure. The only disadvantage of my technology is that once I've finished building the house, according to your plan, you cannot expand in the future. Oh. So you have to think about, in 10 years time, maybe I want to add an extra room here. You have to tell us in advance so we can make the provisions. Because since I have a series of columns, I cannot cut the columns and then put a door with that. Because basically what happens, I'm messing with the structural integrity of the building. Okay. So basically my major flaw is that um, once the house is completely locked, it is locked. Oh. Let's not talk about expanding upwards or sideways. Karibu <laughs> yeah. Sarah, so when am I building your house? Let me think about <laughs> it. Now, from brick and mortar to EPS material, you can get your house in four weeks like three-bedroomed house, 
three weeks you can imagine things we were doing in months and probably in years now you can do it in weeks technology has really changed and as we speak about affordable housing this is one thing that needs to be put in consideration I hope you have learned something and you're going to this new technology because times are changing and we also need to change with time. My name is Dereva Hillary. Very well, there you have it. Times are changing and so we need to change with time. Kemani Karanja from watching from Kanamai Mtwapa. Thank you so much for keeping us company and others who watched this feature and this program. Many thanks for keeping us company. I will now be leaving you in the safe hands of Ken Relbiz and DJ TS Kaonwai Mashariki. I'll be seeing you again next week on Monday. Until then, have yourself a very good night and a productive week ahead. Thank you. My name is Dereva Hilary. <laughs>